Standing Next to the Silver Root by Dan Corson. Up next, we hear from a local man who tells a moving and often chilling story through his art. Activist and storyteller Delbert Richardson has been gathering African-American artifacts and memorabilia for the past 20 years. He has now created an exhibit entitled The Unspoken Truth that focuses on teaching children and young adults about the history of Africans in America. We recently visited the exhibit and spoke with Delbert. A little over 20 years ago, my son's mom and I were traveling to Cannon Beach, Oregon, and we were impressed by seeing some items with black images. And come to find out, they were images that were used for advertisements in the early 50s and 60s. And from that point on, we saw an opportunity to teach our son a part of his history that's so important. My exhibit is about teaching that diasporous journey from Africa to present day through a series of vignettes or short stories using authentic items and relics as well as artifacts with images that charts the journey from Africa, chattel slavery, Jim Crow, and still we rise. I call myself a storyteller. There's quite a few cultures that have an individual that they've entrusted with the oral history of their culture, race, and customs, his responsibility is to articulate that in word. So basically, me being a storyteller, I have a responsibility to share this information in a story form for children and young adults. As a race or a culture, I think one of the biggest challenges we have is that we've allowed others to define us. And speaking specifically about slavery, um, slavery is a noun that basically is a person, place, or thing. And we were not slaves. We were enslaved. And one of my goals is to actually help change the mindset based on that statement alone. Dobert created the exhibit especially for young people. He describes the tour he gives to African-American children when they visit the exhibit. I take them to the Mother Africa section, and the first thing I tell them is that you're from Africa and it's okay. Because one of the biggest disconnects I feel is Africa as a continent and African Americans as being in the United States. There is no difference. It's just a separation based on how we've been defined. Then I take them through the chattel slavery section. And at that point, I do my best to explain to them the difference between institutional slavery and chattel slavery. Institutional slavery is based on indentured servitude. If you and I were in a particular country, say Africa, we were both different tribes. If I conquered your tribe, you became enslaved. But at some point, you could work off your servitude, fold into my community, and even marry and have children. Your children would be free. Chattel slavery, which was developed by Europeans here in America, is based on one premise, the legal ownership of another person. Then we go to Jim Crow, which is what I call we're free on paper. And it's, it's a very, very important transitional piece in our, our development and entry into the Americas because we finally have rights, but yet and still, there are many that refuse to acknowledge us as people and having rights. Then we go into probably the most important part of the entire exhibit, which is Still We Rise, which includes black inventions. And this is a section that I get the most joy out of because to see individuals come in young, old, to see these items and just their eyes open and say, I didn't know that. It's what's really inspiring. This is one of my most cherished pieces. It's from Molly. And the reason why it's so important to me, because Molly was one of the richest civilization known. It was known for its scholars and its major libraries where people from all over the continent of Africa will come and study. It is a terracotta figurine, and this also represents a skill set that was used in building America, because terracotta is nothing more than brickwork. So here you have a mason person, masonry person that eventually was folded into the Americas to do some building. This is the original real estate deed of an Afro-American gentleman who owned land in 1911, 44 and a half acres, extremely rare for a black man to own land at that time.
What you have here is what I call the wall of honoring. This is part of the We to Arise section. And what you have is an assorted assortment of items that were invented by black people. I think the impact is so great because we use these items every single day and they never get the just due in terms of what they did. And this is probably the piece that I love the most. I have changed as a result of the process. I'm more sensitive to individuals of all races and colors because I believe there's an injury that's prevalent in all of us based on slavery and it's some healing that must take place in order for us to feel better about ourselves first and also to accept others. If there's one thing I would hope that would be accomplished by the exhibit is that there would be an honoring that we would show a people of great perseverance that there's some healing needs to happen and we identify the injuries, we accept them and start moving towards healing. And that's not just for blacks, for white as all, as well. And also too, celebration. This is about a big celebration of a people from a great continent that haven't gotten their just due.